What is going on guys, Pums on 87 here, and I am here with an F1 2010 video returning to the old roots of Co-Masters F1 games, and I actually recorded this footage about two months ago, you know, on that period where I had no internet, I borrowed my parents' uh, Xbox 360. Um, but I'm finally getting around to releasing it because I still, well, well because it, well, A, it's F1 2010, which is a great game, and B, we're racing around Turkey, Istanbul, which I believe is is definitely the best circuit which have dropped off the F1 calendar, and the best one that Herman Tilke uh, made as well. Uh, it's, 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 it's actually a wonderful track, and I felt really good driving around again. So the challenge I set for myself for this race is to go from the back to the front, like I did in that Jensen Button last the first video, but this time we're going to do it in heavy rain conditions, full wet conditions the entire race. It's going to be, a, I think it's a 10 or 20% race. Uh, either way, I know it's 12 laps. And we're gonna. That's it. I include a pit stop as well. And I've got all this is off for this race. Legend AI. Well, the highest difficulty. I think it's legend. This game is called. And I've got pit. No pit assist or anything like that. So we're on the grid now. We have got Vettel, my teammate, on in first. McLaren's behind him. Don't know why he shows Al Jazeera in 14th place. And me as Mark Webber in 24th position. And we're going to. Wait for the five lights on the grid now. The five lights can actually illuminate on this game in front of you, so you just hold on the trigger and go now as they're going away now. We've got Degrassi, we've got Glock in front of them as they're flying towards the first corner. There's very wet conditions, and wet conditions are actually quite tricky in this game, much trickier than F1 2015. It's sort of like F1 2016 sort of wet weather conditions. Yeah, trust me, it's tricky. Anyway, as, as I've been rambling on, we're now flying on the inside of Trulli. We've got a Sauber going around the outside. We went very cautious through that fast left hander there. And now we're going around the outside of him. We're going side by side with the Sauber. We cut the corner a little bit, hit the ballard. The first sudden, I don't know if there's any contact with the Sauber there. If there was, I apologise. We're now into eighth, 18th pace. We're now getting six positions. And now it's covering the best part of the circuit, I think. I want the best parts of, of any circuit, really. The legendary turn eight, turn eight corner or s series of corners really, and we actually make a sort of hash. We turn a bit too late for the first apex. We still go on the inside of trolley. That was a fantastic pace. Uh, and now we're on God good run and cover line and gonna die down the inside for this left hander. Actually, goes defensive, so we might be able to get him as well as we miss the apex, go quite wide. But we still get better traction than Shari, and we get it. We're going to get side by side and start on the left hand side. The slight kink in the straight, but we have got the position. This straight is very good for overtaking as well. Um, a lot of strip streaming. Um, obviously, it's a famous. Uh, Weber and Vettel had the famous 2010 cl coming together, uh, one of the famous uh, moments on this track. But now behind Hulkenberg, who in 2010 is in a Williams. Uh, what were Williams powered by? Were they powered by Renault in 2010? I'm not quite sure. I need to update my. I need to uh, read through my 2010 knowledge again, but uh, both Williams actually go really defensive to one. Well, not quite sure why, as I was miles behind them. But that has allowed me to step round that right outside. And now Kobe Ash is going quite slow ahead, but we're going to have a think about a dive bomb into this fast left hander. Well, that's what we're going to do. Kobe Ash is still on that outside, we're going side by side. We break much later for this sort of hairpinny sort of corner. And we got the position up into 12th place. Now we've got the Force Indies, I think. Liuzzi and Sutil, yeah. Um, ahead of us, and I think there was a Renault ahead of him as well. As we're now lap two, it's only a green, green sector, obviously, because it's the second half of the race. Um, so we, we, we made a good start so far. It's very tricky though, um, and it's very easy to make mistakes. As we're about to prove there, as we turn in a bit too late for the uh, legendary turn eight, and we lose a bucket load of time. Um, the AI is actually really quite slow around turn eight. I'm not quite sure why. Liuzzi once again goes defensive into that left hander. I'm not I'm not sure why the AI go really defensive um, when you're only approaching them. There's a li li little little issue with the AI there, but I still think F1 2010 is one of the best games that Comas have made. Hopefully, F1 2016, when that comes out in about a month's time, can be better than this. I've it's just got the potential to with all the features they released. Uh, or the trailers and stuff and what the other YouTubers have um, revealed. But um, I I'm looking forward to F1 2016, guys. I hope you are too. But while I'm rambling on about F1 2016, we tapped Lutzi in the back of him, going to go up his inside on the staff in the show. We've got better strength and speed than, than the Force India. We set a personal best, obviously, it's that too, as I said before. 
Um, and we're getting through to Lutzi. Now, next up is Suto, who we're behind, coming through the turn 8 section. We actually get that corner right for the first time. Suto's going very slowly. We're going to dive on the inside into the final left-hander. And now there's Schumacher and Petrov going quite slow in front of us. Going to give us a great opportunity to fly up the inside of the Mercedes driver. That is now up into P9. Petrov ahead is looking like an easy target. We get good traction going out that corner. Petrov is squirming the power. Like how are we going to get the slipstream? We're going to go for the inside of this little kink, kink straight thing. And now we're into 8th position. Next up, I believe, uh, when it updates, is Mercedes. That's Rosberg, I believe. As we understeer quite a bit into the hairpin, but Petrov doesn't, doesn't, get, a, doesn't get us back, so it's all good. And we're starting to get a little bit of tyre wear. Also, also, I forgot to mention that tyre wear is on in this race. So actually, it was accidentally off of the uh, Jensen Button video, and I'm not quite sure why. This is full realistic simulation now, and now we're into lap 6. This is the, 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 the uh, lap we're going to pit, and we have closed quite steadily to Rosberg. But when, but tyre wear is quite... Uh, it's, it's quite impacting in this game. And I think it impacts me more than the AI, as it's sort of slowed my heart. And it meant I had loads of understeer, like there. But I think that was mainly because I got onto the curb a bit too much on the entry, to be fair, there. But you can see, oh, three of my tyres are orange, and I'm not sure if the tyres explode in this game, but I don't really want to risk it. So now we're coming into the pit lane for the manual pit stop. And of course, that means we've got to brake and put the pit limiter on. I think we went a bit too cautiously into the pit lane. I just didn't want to get a time penalty. I've seen another 2010 videos. It's very easy to do. And now we're going into the pit box. We want to brake in our marks. We brake very nicely. That was actually pretty pretty well done, but now we're getting held in the pit lane. The engineer is telling us to wait, and oh, this is awful. This is this is halting our progress massively. Finally, get rid of some 9.7 seconds stop. That was awful. I don't know what the pit crew are doing there. They should just release me, really. I mean, it's wide enough pit lane to go side by side down, but um, <laughs> and unfortunately, I left the pit lane limit on a bit too long there. Uh, so we got at least out to track 19th position. Now let's see if we, oh we probably haven't jumped Rosberg, we definitely haven't, but hopefully we haven't lost too many positions. So that's Cove Lion, and obviously a back marker has yet to pit, it's just pit there. But that's Schumacher in front of us, about 2-3 seconds in front of us, and we passed him a lap 2 or 3 or whatever it was. So we have lost a huge amount of times in the pit stop, I don't think that was all my fault, I probably couldn't have done, thi done things a little bit quicker, but obviously that's my first manual pit stop in this game. I just did it obviously at caution. Yeah, Hawkenberg behind us. We definitely passed him really early on in this in the in the race. And now we're going through turn eight. Schumacher's going very slowly. We make a very nice move of the inside into turn eight. We got much better grip or much much better pace than the AI. Now into lap eight. We're beginning to charge back through the field. First up in line is Petrov as another car goes to pit lane there. And he sort of parks on the apex of the final corner. This gives us a good run. Out of the final corner, on the pit straight, we're now in a slipstream, we're going to dive up the inside, going to the first corner, we, we run slightly wide, banging wheels a little bit, but clean racing as we get, we now get wear on our front right, but that was good racing there between me and Petrov, he didn't give up there, which is uh, good to see from AI, and now Rosberg is up, the, is up the road, but he's quite far up the road actually, after we passed Petrov, he was about 7-8 seconds up the road, as you can see from start lap 10, uh, gap is 7 seconds, 0.999, so that's near enough 8 seconds. But coming to the final lap, after we set a blistering lap 11, uh, the fast lap of the race, I believe it was, it now brought the gap down to 2.7 seconds. We're definitely a much better a pace than the AI in this race, even the range is difficult to do. But unfortunately, we couldn't catch Rosberg by the end. Sebastian Vettel, our teammate, is going to win the race, but look. You know, I'm fairly happy with it. We've kept it clean, we've kept it nice, and we're on the points, which is good to see. And we're going to come across the line. It was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. No, no, we're not. We're spun out. We've completely bottled it. We've bottleburged it, and we need to find reverse gear because we're up against the wall now. Oh, why? The, oh, it's so easy in this game to spin, and we're reversing down the circle, trying to find first gear. We've got a penalty, I think, for illegal blocking. Oh, no, no, dangerous driving. There's a car that's hit us now. And we're out of the points. We're 11th place. We've got a penalty, though, so that won't even matter. We're going to beat the Force India across the line, but we've just completely bottled it. We had 8th place in our sights. We had it nailed in. The car's behind. We're miles behind. We just it's, it's so easy in this game to make a mistake and just spin out. Uh, lo lo lose rear end grip and stuff. So that's, that's unfortunate to see, but... 
Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. We actually did finish 24th for them, so we get no positions thanks to that 20 second time penalty. Uh, so, pretty unfortunate, but um, that's what you get if you make a mistake. Quite, it's quite costly in this game. So, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, please smash the like button, please subscribe if you want to see more videos in the future. Including any, including more F1 videos and including F1 2016 videos when that comes out. So I'll see you guys then for my next video. See you then. Palms out.